Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is the uh, session. Uh, it's a big data government governance for Paris Agreement and the Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, workshop number number one. Okay, those for our workshop. So uh, today we have uh, three panels. We have one hour uh, 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 this session, only one hour, 60 minutes. We have three panels. Uh, would you, Professor, would you introduce yourself? How okay, hello everyone. Thank you for the invitation. Uh, my name is Ricardo Israel Robles Pelayo. I'm from Mexico. I'm a lawyer and professor of the Universidad Humanitas. Um, I am glad to be here. I am going to talk about the, the legal uh, law, the laws in Mexico that regulate all about the personal data and what happened in the big data in, according to Mexico. So thank you very much. Thank you. And Anna, would you introduce yourself? Half minutes. Uh, good morning and thank you very much for the invitation. Uh, so I'm Anna Neves, I'm the, the director of the Department for the Information Society at the Foundation for Science and Technology in Portugal. And uh, basically I'm going to talk about the, uh, the public sector data and uh, under the, the, uh, the general uh, regulation on, on um, data protection uh, th that was uh, uh, launched in May. Great. Thank you very much. I am Liu Chuang from Chinese Academy of Sciences. I'm a geographer and the focus on the uh, big data, uh, uh, the data publishing. And also I'm a co-chair co for the uh, data publishing in developing countries of CoData. So uh, and, uh, uh, today uh, we will have a discuss about the big data issues. Before that, I will give the uh, background and the objectives of the workshop. Uh, this, Mati, would you come, come in? Yeah. So this uh, we we work on the uh, from the visits uh, to sustainable development goals. You know, see that's uh, especially for the uh, poverty uh, alleviation and the hungry free clean water ecosystem and the environment, and so on. But uh, the data in the uh, 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 for the uh, OECD data mod, uh, uh, from the uh, GIS data uh, call, uh, there are 86 percent of the from the OECD uh, countries. Only 14 percent from developing countries. So this is a big problem. And then CoData uh, to establish a task group uh, in the developing countries in 2002, uh, and then. Um, we have uh, uh, serious uh, uh, workshops in the different countries focus on the strategy, policy, solution, capacity buildings, for example, for chi China, uh, South, uh, South African, uh, Brangier, uh, Mongolia, Colombia, Cuba, Kenya, India, Madagascar, and so on. So, uh, uh, and, and then we also have, so you can see this, uh, we also have the uh, Chinese Association for Science and Technology and uh, uh, work hard uh, for the UN, so each internet governance forum, we will have this to discuss about the uh, solutions. And uh, also we have, uh, in not only this, we, uh, we joined this uh, United Nations in uh, New York, we, we propose to share the research data and reduce digital divide. And uh, this uh, suggestion is accepted by the United Nations. Uh, and then we developed the Nairobi data sharing principles uh, and from the international organizations all agree this is good for, uh, for the developing countries. <coughs> and so uh, this is the background. So today, with the objectives of the, this workshop, we are through the forum to find the solution and to propose the following joint actions and the focus on the guidelines for implementation 
and uh, governance of data sharing principles for Paris Agreement and the Sustainable Development Goals. So this is the, uh, uh, today, uh, what we want to do, okay? And uh, before that, before the, the two panels, I would like to give the uh, one case, uh, what the, uh, uh, the, the case study. This is the case from the China, the open data of the trust, uh, how the data open and the trust data. So we have this, uh, uh, call this solution with a uh, uh, honey cup solution. Uh, uh, sorry, use this name, uh, but then uh, we, we give the, uh, uh, the, the explanation. So there's a, 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 a six dimensions. So for our data publishing, reportery, sharing, citation, impact, and the networking. Okay, so uh, this solution, we have a six, uh, uh, six dimensions. Uh, first one is data publishing. Go ahead. So we have this uh, data publishing system, uh, and uh, for everybody can, can access the data from the website. Uh, no more than three clicks, you will get the data. And also we have the data paper described the data, what the data is, and how to use the data. Then we use the journal, so the global change and, and the discovery journal. So, uh, and then second dimension is data reporting. Right now, there are also the data published uh, and the reported, reported is more than 400 data sets. And this data set from uh, 12 countries, uh, the author and the co-authors more than 300, uh, more, more, more than seven, uh, 700 uh, from uh, more than 300 organizations. So this is, uh, and the third one is data sharing. And we have a data sharing the policy, so uh, everybody can free download for you for end use. So right now it's uh, more than one million visitors and uh, more than uh, 40,000 IP users worldwide from the 70, uh, 74 countries. So every day the data can be uh, downloaded, increased every day. Uh, <coughs> Fourth one, fourth dimension is data networking. So in the data networking, we, we in uh, networking, all the data sets are networking to the DOI registration. And then also uh, uh, networking to the world data system. This uh, data publishing system is the regular member of world data system. And uh, also the GEOS data provider and the broker networking. Also, China Geo Data, uh, Geo Data Publi Publishing Center. Also, it's uh, 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 networking to the data citation index of the collaborative analytics. And uh, data publishing infrastructure for core data task group in developing countries. So all these kind of things uh, get uh, networking. So we, we have this uh, uh, get the uh, uh, VCS prize uh, this year. Uh, because of the uh, open the data and the many uh, uh, users, they give uh, very good comments, uh, they benefit them. And the next, uh, next dimension uh, is data citation. Uh, we identify the, the data uh, for uh, five groups, uh, and the uh, uh, data archived in the uh, World Data Center, or open in the uh, National Data Center, or in the, the data is uh, Everybody can uh, publish in the network or just internal use and so on. And then we uh, make the data citation rules as uh, two ways for data citation. One is uh, if you in the uh, publish the article, so in the uh, references uh, uh, site. And another uh, uh, side uh, method in the footnote of the art, uh, articles. Uh, and then we have uh, 36 journals join this uh, data citation practice partners in China. Uh, and then the last one is data impact. So many scientists that they don't want to publish, they don't want to publish data, just keep there in their computer because they, they don't know, uh, they didn't get uh, uh, whether they uh, get a benefit. So we use the data impact 
uh, methodology. And now everybody can understand what contribution uh, and uh, your, uh, your data could be. So we, uh, we developed a, a, a data science impact score. Uh, and then calculate uh, each data set, uh, the, the, the score number. And also all data others, you got the uh, uh, impact score. And for example, this is a data. Uh, this data is a boundary of the Tibet, uh, and this is other. We publish the data and the publish the data paper. And then, uh, who use the data? Publish uh, use the data, and then we calculate uh, their uh, eleven cited uh, of his data, and the got the, and the got the, uh, the ranking. Uh, it got a good ranking number. Uh, so give that certificate, so the authors are very happy. So this is a summary, uh, so data publishing, repository, sharing, networking, citation, impact. So we call this a data handicap solution. It's a, a practical solution of the global trend research data publishing and the repository data services system. The data uh, handicap solution is helpful for the data openly quality, trusty, and timely, which are critical for sciences and sustainability. Thank you. So next, so Anna, would you give your, your pin, your experience? Thank you very much. So now I will give, uh, my, my presentation will be about uh, this so important open data under the, uh, this new uh, general data protection regulation from the European Union. Yeah. So the point here is always getting knowledge from the public sector data. And um, the second one, please. Uh, and so here I, I want to show um, how this, all these uh, big data uh, can uh, improve uh, research and uh, innovation and serve the 17 uh, sustainable development goals. So uh, this is to show how important it is and uh, uh, what is happening now with the GDPR. Uh, so, uh, in a nutshell, well, we, we can see uh, data that, uh, from the controller that is established in the European Union and the, uh, the controller that is outside the European Union, but we are always talking about that uh, subjects uh, in the uh, European Union. The, the controller or processor uh, is the person who determines why and how the personal data should be uh, processed. Okay, so here we have uh, what means personal data and uh, what are the, pers the, the special personal data that, that are totally prohibited uh, to have any process uh, or, or to be processed. So personal data, it's name, personal, uh, the, the passport name, uh, the, the personal, uh, uh, sorry, the, um, the passport number, uh, the online identifier, and uh, the special personal data, as you can see here, is about uh, racial, uh, ethnicity, political opinions, uh, sexual life, etc. So these uh, are not processed. So the main principles relating to processing of uh, known sensitive personal data, so uh, are these ones that I, I present here. So the, the main points are that they have to be processed lawfully, fairly, and in a, in a transparent manner, be collected and only specified explicit and legitimate purpose, and not be further processed in any uh, manner, be adequate, be accurate, not be kept as identifiable data for longer than necessary for the purposes concerned, and be processed in a manner uh, that ensures appropriate security. So we are talking about integrity and confidentiality. Uh, 
what I think it's most important here for this workshop is the archiving in the public interest, scientific and historical research data. So, we have under the GDPR derogation, uh, under Article 89, uh, where we have uh, safeguards uh, for this kind of data. So, uh, the derogations foreseen are these ones, the right of access by the data subject, right to re rectification, etc. So, we, you have here all the uh, derogations and as I think that uh, this, uh, uh, this PowerPoint uh, will be uh, put uh, to, uh, in an open manner, uh, you can have here uh, all these um, derogations and all these uh, safeguards uh, in a nutshell. So you don't have to see the regulation, you have all, all the information here. The next one, please. So here you, you can see in a, in a very practical way what happens with this data. So the first option is that uh, if it is personal information to be transferred, if it is uh, data lawfully collected and processed, if the purpose of the transfer lawful and uh, lawful and uh, compatible with the, the one for which the data were initially collected or, and processed, yes, they can be shared. If the, data, uh, if the data protection rules do not apply and transfer may not take place, so there is no transfer. So in any other options, there is no uh, transfer, so no sharing of data. The second option is when there is a adequacy decision. If there was not, so there is no, uh, no way to share data and uh, the transfer may take place uh, in the, under this second option. The, the third option, so it's about the derogations for specific uh, situations. For example, data subject has explicitly consented to the, to the proposed transfer after having been informed of the possible risks of such transfers for the data subject to the absence of an adequacy decision and appropriate safeguards. So here we are talking about uh, the data that serve research and th that are very important. So we have them here under the third option. So uh, I think it was a, um, a very straight presentation, N not to have the complexity of the regulation uh, because in a nutshell, I think that is what I presented that is important for getting knowledge from the public sector data and still under the, uh, this new regulation, uh, a lot can be done, but with, the, with these uh, private uh, new rules uh, that are uh, adequate and, be, and are necessary to, to, to vote. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. That is a very important, uh, this uh, uh, GDPR. Uh, and uh, I think this is a new uh, policy. Uh, and, uh, Since the, May this yeah, year. The, yeah. And also it's very uh, uh, important, uh, not only for European, but uh, for the all, all the, the world. world. Yes. Right. Thank you. Yes. So next, uh, the print, okay. If I can only uh, say something. Well, sure. it's, uh, so what I meant with this presentation is about uh, data that will be shared uh, with the world and the world share with the uh, European Union. So you have here the rules and the derogations and uh, our data that we are talking here and open data, uh, they are under the derogations and, uh, um, and so uh, if we are not talking about private data, as I explained, so all, all this data can be shared and, of course, open. Yeah. Very, very important. Ah, good. Thank you very much. Then, Adam, please. Thank you very much. Um, so I'm going to talk about the big data and the human rights according to the Mexican law and the governance and legal issues of data access. Next slide, please. So what is the problem to protect data on the internet and the problem to protect them from the information obtained from big data in Mexico? Well, in Mexico, like any other country in the world, personal data traffic has increased rapidly. 
the economic value of obtaining this information is one of the most important factors for the public and private sector to be interested in its legal regulation. Therefore, we find in big data an important information tool of our times to fulfill that purpose. However, the use of information obtained through big data is one of the major problems in our days, regardless of the whether the information is exposed consensually or unconsensually by users of information technology. Next, please. What is the position of the Mexican government to protect the personal data of the individuals of the public and private sectors? Well, the Mexican authority have made a great effort to regulate the protection of users' personal data through the creation of national laws or adoption of international legal instruments. Next, please. The legal framework in Mexico is the political constitution of the United Mexican States, the federal laws and their regulations, the official Mexican standards, about the international regulation, we adopted the Convention 108 for the protection of individuals with regard of automatic proceedings of personal data and also some international standards. In the Mexican Constitution, human rights are recognized and established. With regard to the protection of personal data, Article 6 established the information that refers to private life and personal data with the protect in the terms and with the expectation established by law. Article 6, 16 of the same Constitution states everyone has the right to the protection of their personal data, access, rectification, and cancellation of them, as well as to express their opposition in the terms established by law, which shall establish the cases of exception to the principles that govern the processing of data for reason of national security, public order, public health and safety regulations, or to protect the rights of third parties. There are also federal laws for the protection of personal data without distinguishing whether the information is obtained through the big data or any other source of information. And the most important are the federal law of protection of personal data held by individuals, and this law is addressed to the private sector. The general law for the protection of personal data in possession of obligated subjects with this law is addressed to the public sector. And the law of advanced electronic signature this law is addressed to the public and private sector. The protection of personal data is also regulated to the following official Mexican standards. The Information Technologies Security Techniques Code of Practice for the Protection of Personal Data for Public Cloud Service Providers, as the official code is NMX I27018 NYCE, 2016. These standards agree with the international standard ISO IEC 27018-2014. The other official Mexican standards named Health Technologies and Information establishes the functional objectives and functionalities that the products of electronic clinical file system must observe to guarantee the interoperability proceedings interpretation, confidentiality, safety, and use of standards of and catalogs of the information of electronic health records. The official code is NOM 024 SSA 32010. According to the regular regulation, the last June, Mexico adopted the Convention 108 for the protection of individuals with regard to automatic proceeding of personal data. As this is now, this represents the harmonization between the flow information and international protection of personal data. However, the advance of technology, the use of information from the internet and big data, as well as the information used in social networks, go faster than any rule created by man. The next, please. The responsible authorities to safeguard the protection of personal data in Mexico, in Spanish, is el Instituto Nacional de Transparencia, Acceso a la Información y Protección de Datos Personal. 
In English, is the National Institute of Transparency Access to Information and Protection of Personal Data, whose responsibility is to guarantee the right of access of people to public government information, protect personal data is in the hands of both federal governments and individuals. However, it seems that the efforts made by Mexican authority have been overcome by the advancement of the technology and the lack of control over that traffic uh, through information technologies. For that reason, I'm convinced that the best way to protect the personal data is to the creation of a law that aims to leave public and private institutions to educate and inform all the people how they can protect your personal data, considered as part of human rights, specifically the right to the privacy. So this is my participation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much for sharing this, uh, in the, uh, this Mexico uh, experience about uh, balancing the open access data, public data, and the protect personal data. So I think that's your opinion, the same, uh, uh, same uh, uh, idea. Can I ask? Uh, sure. Go ahead. May I? Mm -hmm. uh, thank you very much. Um, I just would like to know if Mexico is, uh, is aware of this uh, G GDPR uh, and uh, if uh, uh, is something that uh, um, it was a thought as something against uh, the sharing of data or if it is not even an, an issue for Mexico? Well, it's a real concern. We are concerned about that. But you know that the authorities in Mexico, the Mexican, uh, they are creating a, a Mexican le legislation about to protect and combat all these kind of activities. But we are in that process. We are also, nowadays, we are creating another laws like the lay fintech who is also in the financial activities but we are uh, now regulating according to the move of the world so we are concerned about it thank you okay so now we uh, we go to the uh, interaction uh, dialogue so any questions go ahead so first, uh, you say your well, name and uh, welcome, and then question. Yeah. Okay, hello, my name is Anna. I am an IGA follower and moderator and uh, very interested in cybersecurity and GDPR. And I would like to ask regarding Mexico, Compared to other countries of Latin America, there have been very work, a lot of workshops talking the difficulties of Brazil, Argentina, the difference of creating the, um, their own community in the favelas, the, the approval of different authorities to do this without being ruled as a media, as a media system. How, uh, compared to Latin America, how is Mexico doing with this regulation, with this facility and legislation? Well, I consider that we are in a good place, talking about Latin America. And so, as I said, we also have created a new regulation about the financials. Uh, the, the, the call of the law is the FinTech, the financial technologies. So in this matter, in the specific in this matter, I think uh, that we are the first country in the world that is regulating these this activities. But uh, we need the regulatory, the secondary law to, to apply in Mexico. So I think we are in a good position around the Latin American countries. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any question? Any other questions? So I have a question to Anna. Uh, this, uh, because there's uh, through the balancing, uh, there's uh, open, public data and uh, prevented uh, personal data. So, and uh, uh, how balancing the two different issues, the data? So the point here is that the private, uh, the private uh, data that we are talking about and that we want to, to, to protect under the GDPR, 
it's really the private ones that, that I, I mentioned, like uh, name, uh, the passport number, etc. Yeah. Uh, all the others, uh, and there are the, the data that are totally prohibited to be uh, processed, as the ones about uh, ethnicity, uh, racial, uh, religion, or uh, any of, uh, of these ones that are foreseen in the regulation as well. Regarding the public data that serve the sustainable development goals that are totally, well, that are uh, uh, really important. So I don't see here any, any problem because they are anonymized and so they serve the purpose and uh, we don't have any, any problem, any private uh, um, problems with uh, personal data. Okay. Um, I don't know if you have any other question for me, but I would like to know here with the, the people that we have here, if uh, any, uh, any person here, uh, if they do research and if, they, um, if the, 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 the G GDPR is seen as uh, an obstacle or not uh, for, for the research uh, between Europe and, and the world. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, any question? So, uh, lady, where I come from? A lady? <laughs> mm -hmm. Good. So, how about you? Yeah, if you have a question. No question? Okay. Okay. Uh, my question is, where you where you come from? Um, <laughs> I'm from South Benin. 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 Ah, Benin. Ah, good. So, other questions? Go ahead. Now to give me the opportunity here, I'm back. Uh, there have been two very interesting uh, workshops in the morning regarding social networks. In one of them, there were, as far as I remember, Wikipedia, and uh, they were explaining the Mozilla system and the um, uh, Wikipedia development for the legal frame, not for a legal framework, but for the framework. Uh, what is your opinion, three of you, considering that if the community is strong enough to have an auto regulation or control, the need of expertise, either lawyers or any kind of, uh, of uh, people who will be really taking care of the security of the risk of, of educating the users, because also the fault of the commuters. Uh, what do you think of avoiding, how do you think of the EL having an, a good system of auto regulation of, for the social networks and avoiding having an expert or a chief officer security or any other kind of uh, outsider intervening. Um, it is a very interesting question and uh, uh, you raised a lot of uh, different things in, uh, in, your, in your question. <clears throat> uh, but my, my comment and my observation to that is, um, is, uh, is the following. So uh, normally we, uh, we defend uh, an open, uh, accessible uh, internet and uh, with no regulation. So it's, it, it has been a principle. Nonetheless, we saw uh, a kind of uh, uh, violation of data uh, the dissemination of uh, data that was not uh, foreseen. And so uh, governments in Europe, for instance, they saw that, uh, they felt that they had to do something and that's why the GDPR uh, born and was, uh, and, and was uh, adopted. So um, men are always behind uh, of the issues. And in technology, totally, we are uh, really, really behind. So we have to have more digital competences to better understand where we are going and to better foresee what will be the future 
um, to avoid and to be more active than passive. And uh, so I don't, I'm not certain whether it is uh, always regulation, but um, we need really a principles. I don't know if, if it is a charter. I don't know if it is good enough. Uh, but uh, this is a really multi-stakeholder uh, um, approach to have here some uh, principles um, to, to guide us in the, social, in the social networks. Social networks, they are very good, I think, that are very positive. They open us a new world, but of course, they, um, as everything that is good, it's always a bad thing. So we have sun and we, we have rain. So you have always uh, these, uh, uh, these two, two things, the positive and, uh, and the negative. But technology can be used for very, very bad things, but it can be used for amazing things. So let's, uh, so my point here is to uh, insist uh, on the capacity building on digital competencies for uh, governments and all the stakeholders uh, perceive where we are and what can be the technology in uh, one year, in five years, in 10 years. Well, um, my point of view, as I said, is in Mexico is a big issue. The social network networks is out of control, you know. And even the last this year, we had a presidential election, so the fake news and all this bad information was over the, the networks, uh, Facebook and you know, the others. But I really think that according to the Mexican law, it's very difficult to regulate or to control all this information and the personal information data. So I really think that the best way to avoid all the bad things that are happening in the network is like to educate and to inform the people how to use responsibly the networks. So. I think it's the only way that we can avoid all the, the bad things that is happening on the network. It's the only solution I, I can believe it's gonna be safe. Thank you. Yeah, so from China case, I think that's uh, the most challenging is uh, how to share the data. And uh, some uh, professors, uh, they, they create data, but they don't, uh, didn't put them public available uh, to share. So there, because there we need uh, infrastructure, we need uh, uh, policy, uh, we need the networking. So how this is data sharing environment? So this is uh, very complicated. So that is why we said the six dimensions. Six dimension, not only one dimension. Only po policy put there, but uh, very hard to follow. To say, for example, China originally we have a data policy, so data should be open, openly available to everybody. But uh, some professors said uh, it takes me, it takes my a lot of time. I I prefer use the time to to publish my paper instead of data. So, mm -hmm. so, so this is, uh, but, but this is a problem. So, uh, but this is not only the policy issue. But the uh, infrastructure, credit, and uh, you know, uh, and 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 the uh, quality and uh, everything put together, so complicated. So that is, I said, uh, only one dimension, two dimensions, that don't work. Not even it yes, works only maybe little, maybe not perfect. So uh, after the 20 years experience in China, we're looking for the solution. Finally, we used the six dimensions. So publishing, a long-term preservation repository, and then sharing, openly available sharing, and then networking. You need networking globally. Uh, we call it the acting locally, networking globally. So, and then if you use, user to use the data, you need a site, citation. You need a site. You need the credit 
to the data authors. Then we can calculate what the data impact, and we can find who use your data to do what kind of country, what kind of science research product. So how make the whole the scientific data circular, and then everybody happy. So this is the environment. So that's we we uh, four years ago we have this uh, data uh, open data sharing principle in uh, in Nairobi. We call be, we call it the Nairobi data sharing principles, uh, and, and then in developing country. So that when, and then we focus and discuss and discuss again to focus on the implementation, so guideline. So finally, we find that this works. In China, we uh, have a training program for more than 20 countries, uh, uh, people, scientists from uh, uh, in the Asia and the developing countries come to China. We have training, and then uh, there's some of them are leader, uh, the government leader, a uh, data manager, uh, some of the scientists or technology uh, engineer people. But they uh, decided this works. So they also they send us some uh, send us data published. Uh, and so I think that's, uh, this is, uh, uh, is a practical uh, dimension. Uh, is how we implement of the policy. Uh, so, um, uh, and, the, and the, the developing country is so different from USA and the European country, uh, OECD is so different. And the uh, uh, infrastructure is not perfect. Uh, sometimes it doesn't work. So we need the, uh, international cooperation, help developing country to set up the infrastructure. So that is the, with the global change research data published in the repository is the infrastructure for the co-data in developing countries. So all developing countries, they, if they publish, they report their data for all for free. And then also not only for, for report data, publishing data, but also provide the training, uh, training program. And we have the policies that if everybody, whole the world, if you download the data, free. And no more than three clicks, you got the data. So save time. Uh, and we, we request the users site, site, site the data. Uh, and also we have a 10% policy, pro protected uh, intellectual property. What does it mean 10% policy? That means if you use, use some kind of users, they are not use the whole bunch of data. They use uh, from this that they said uh, take some record. Another take some record. And then compose it with a new data set. And he said, ah, this is my data. Yes. But this yes or not? So I will give this uh, 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 policy is a yes, but not. What does it mean? Yes, uh, if you take, the, uh, take some record, uh, okay, but no more than 10% of all this. And then you have to cite where the 10% come from. So recognize where the data come from. So in this way, I think that's everybody happy. Uh, everybody happy. So officer happy, user happy, uh, government happy government said, uh, foundation that uh, they they invest the money they said, oh my money got a benefit okay good so that is uh, so we almost ready after today's discussion so next year we will go to the Mexico and uh, the, the professor is nominated uh, uh, to be the co-chair of the co-data task group in developing countries uh, very soon uh, maybe uh, uh, one week. Uh, we'll publish, uh, we'll give the uh, formal announcement. But now it's uh, already approved, I, I know, <laughs> internal information. Uh, so, so I think this is uh, next year we will have another uh, summer to so finalize the guideline, the, the data sharing principle implementation guideline uh, in development countries. So that is uh, we reduce the digital divide. Uh, so we, we, we Implement and it's acting locally. Everybody can acting in the local country, but networking globally. So we are home team. So benefit the whole society.
So this is my, uh, our question, our answer. So not only for my personal, but our team, coded team, and, and also is a task group member. So this is our answer. Well, we do hope you use our data and set our data and acknowledge them after and they are very happy. Thank you. Any other questions? Go ahead. Hello, um, I'm Robert from the Commonwealth Telecommunications Organization. Um, thank you very much. I would just I'd like to ask the question, what more can be done on an international level to encourage data sharing? Are all countries involved in sharing data for the good of the Paris Agreement and SDGs? Or are, more, are some governments um, slow and um, what are the reasons for that? Well, uh, this question is something that, that uh, I was uh, thinking about where, uh, when the uh, professor was, was uh, talking about CODATA and uh, what this organization is, uh, is, is doing for, uh, um, for the digital divide that is very, very important. So, but, but uh, and um, I'm going to, to try to reply to you with a question to professor that is, um, how this uh, uh, big data sharing uh, is seen by the government, meaning is it a public policy led by the government or at the researcher level only? Yeah, we, we have divided the data into three different categories. One is government data. It's uh, the government funded and the government data, mm -hmm. yes. Second is uh, uh, public funding supported research data. A third one is a private company, something. But of course now another group comes, it's a citizen data. A citizen, uh, mm -hmm. they make the photos and the submit. Mm -hmm. And there are some uh, comments, the citizen data. So actually uh, a, a full group a category is data. But uh, we focus on the research data, public funded research data. So this kind of data, it's different from the government data from private data, more complete. And, uh, and very important for the sustainable development because there's a research. Uh, many of them are very helpful for understand the society, understand the science and technology. So that is a very important part. Right now uh, in China, uh, not only China, I think in the whole the developing country, the similar things. Uh, uh, there are many journals. In China, we have uh, 5,000 journals, academic journals. And mostly every year we have a uh, 26, uh, let me, how much? 2 million uh, about, about the paper, paper published. But most of them, 80%, I think, at least, 80% paper is related with the data. No, they're based on the data analysis and the published paper. But data, pa paper published, but data, where is, where is the data? All in the computer, the personal computer, not published. So this is the, is the big problem. So now we're working with the uh, journal uh, publishers, the publisher open data and the open knowledge together. So we call it open science. So of course the most uh, uh, difficult thing is a uh, challenging thing is open data. So, so we focus on the several years, focus on the solve the problem about the data. Now we link to the journal, link to the papers, knowledge, so we can data and the knowledge Establish the open science, so for the sustainable development goal. But how to publish there? We use the peer review, but papers peer review, but data also peer review. We, we, we definitely need the data trust. It's a, it's a quality data. So in the UN uh, and I um, in in the in the South Africa, I think the first UN uh, 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 world data world data uh, conference forum said quality data and the timely data is critical. So how to make the data quality? 
high quality. So trust, mm -hmm. so have to peer review. This is the, is the only way as a peer review. Uh, so we use the peer review methodology and the published data. So this is, uh, uh, and uh, this is not the only uh, one way, but also we publish that if the, the data is, is not good, the user can, can make a comments. User said that this data is wrong, this is not good. So we feed back to the author, then edit them. So this is the way. Um, the, at least at now, now we, we are working. And I think the core data, ICSU, WDS, uh, World Data System, uh, and uh, GEO, uh, and uh, uh, RDA, Research Data Alliance. So we all work on this, for this. So, mm -hmm. any other question? Go ahead. Good morning. Uh, oh. Good morning. Can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, Marta Diaz from Portugal. Well, uh, my, my question is the, for the, the whole panel. So, in, in my perspective, GDPR is an example of a regulation for good, uh, but it, it obviously created some restrictions uh, concerning data flow. So, my question is. If in the end of the day, uh, scientific research uh, and big data analysis, for instance, is facing now new obstacles, and how to solve that? Um, it's a very good question, and uh, that was uh, something that I, I was trying to, uh, to explain before. That is, um, this research uh, data sharing, um, they, they have now um, this new framework, and this new framework, it doesn't d damage anything about research. Uh, it only helps uh, to, to protect uh, private uh, and personal data. Uh, why? Because we are talking in, in, uh, in research data, we are uh, mainly talking about an, 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 uh, anonymized data. So uh, there is uh, no problem. But uh, here we are, we are talking about uh, a top-down uh, policy. And uh, I would like to know if in uh, China, the government is uh, is um, is pushing for this kind of uh, policy, or if it is only a movement from the researchers, well, whether it is a top-down approach or uh, bottom-up. I think there's uh, two two ways. Uh, one is uh, top-down, uh, and the uh, uh, council process the uh, uh, deliver the uh, regular uh, data sharing regulation of China. It's uh, 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 last month, I think, it's a new one. And also a bottom-up methodology through the data center, data publishing. Mm -hmm. So the two way link together. So I think the original only one way, yeah, top down. It's not perfect, yes. but it works, but not perfect. Mm -hmm. So there are two ways work together. So that is works. So that is, uh, we have a professor, he said, uh, this is a new milestone of data sharing in China. So there are two ways together. That is why science is so important. Yeah, yeah. so that make uh, all scientists, uh, they active, they very active. Yes. So they just uh, submit their data for publishing, don't need uh, to give some the, the, the high quality data publish. Mm -hmm. Not uh, as, as small, of that. They, they want more cited. So they want to Beautiful sure. data, probably. So I think this is a good way to put together. Okay, so, uh, okay, and one more question. Yeah. 
It's good. Thanks. So uh, I, I'm quite aware about, uh, about the European uh, framework uh, regarding mainly GDPR, but uh, I, I'm quite curious about the, the legal framework concerning the China environment and, of course, Mexico. Can, can you add some information on that? Uh, thank you. Okay, talking about the research, it's about the concern of intellectual property in Mexico. So we have a federal law that protects all the creation from the, the researchers. But unfortunately, the law is a little bit slow. Uh, we cannot protect the intellectual property that is from or are from the, the big data, for example. So actually, we are concerned about what happened around the world and we want to adopt all these kind of criteria to regulate all the intellectual property. So we are observing what, what is happening and we are uh, taking our task to, to do as well. Thank you very much. From China side, I think it's no problem. China is, uh, right now, is uh, have a, uh, the research on the no uh, get together to discuss how to coverage them with the European. So next, uh, next 10 days, I will come again to just uh, talk with the European to Brussels, talk about the cooperation China, European cooperation on the data sharing. Mm -hmm. So I think that's uh, uh, GDPR is one of topics for how China work on this with the uh, European. Mm -hmm. So I think that's uh, uh, GDPR is not only European law, but China we are follow, I think. <laughs> and this is the basic for our yeah, cooperation. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. very, very important one. And also it's a contribution to the world. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. Okay, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, so we have very good discussions, a very good uh, presentation. And uh, thank you very much for your panels. And uh, we we will we keep open. And anyone have uh, questions and uh, keep contact with us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.